My name is Marie Norden. I am Fedora's Community Action and Impact Coordinator. I chair and run the Mindshare Committee, um, and I've been involved in Fedora since 2013, uh, starting with an outreach internship as a Fedora Badges design intern. So I'm going to hand it over to Vipul. Hello, uh, I'm Vipul. My pronouns are he, him. For my day job, I work in community platform engineering, where I try to do things well, mostly break Fedora, CentOS, or CentOS CI infrastructure. But in community, I'm very passionate about people. I love people. I, in Mindshare, I do mentored project representation, which means I work with Marie, I work with Sumantro, and a few more amazing people, volunteers, to ensure that our mentored project programs are running smoothly. It's mostly just, hey, what do you think about this? Should we do that? It's not really a lot of tasks. So if you are interested in that, reach out to me. We can talk more about it. Uh, in council, I also do uh, DEI. I represent DEI team. Uh, it's a DEI advisor role, but it's mostly just making sure whatever council is doing or general federal community happening, there is a voice representing federal diversity side of things. Uh, I'm also working on accessibility working group, which I'm made with amazing Emma, who is also in CPE and a few more people. So that's me and looking forward to this discussion, question and answer sort of place. Anurag, up to you. Thank you, Vipo. Hello everybody, my name is Omrad. I am I'm also um, a mind chair, but recently I'm also starting working with other website and application teams and start to represent them as a mind chair member. And also I'm working with the KDA. I'm doing a lot of work with that with that with all folks to also my main focus was in, in mobility to bring Fedora into the forms. Hopefully we have some improvements going to be happen. Of course this is take a lot of time, but hopefully we will get there as well. And also, I like, aside from the technical job, I also like to help out the people as a, as a, how can I say, the old uh, ambassador person. So I hope I can help in best of my ability as well. Thank you so much. Back to you, Marie. So what is the Mindshare Committee and what does it do for Fedora? So we're a group of folks that are dedicated to doing a variety of things. One thing we do is improve communications between different teams. And how we do that is by having represent representatives from the most active teams uh, on the Mindshare side of Fedora get together and meet on a regular basis. Um, we also have elected representatives, right? So that um, folks from other parts of the community, no matter where they're from, have a chance to participate and hang out and be a part of this decision-making process. So one of the main things that we do is support our various outreach efforts. So this means events, swag, um, and events means like, you know, um, funding for hotels and airfare. It could be trains. Um, and we're sending swag out to them. We also try to assist with hey, these are some ways that you could improve the event or connect them with someone, connect the requester with someone else who's doing something similar or has done something similar in the past. Um, we also try to motivate contributors and teams. And we do this by bringing back the energy that we have in Mindshare to our various teams. I mentioned elected representatives, but I also mentioned team reps. So the team reps can go back to their teams and share what is happening in Mindshare, share what's happening in the broader community. And part of what I do when I run the meeting is I bring in news and information and announcements that's happening from all over Fedora, right? So that we all have a good idea of what's happening, you know, that week in Fedora. So, you know, if there's something that's relevant to some other team, a member of Mindshare can bring that back. Um, we also share best practices. I mentioned, you know, giving people advice on how to run an event. Um, but we also have started to, um, what's the right word, grow in various ways, right? So at this point, we're doing surveys, we're doing virtual events. So when a group 
or a person might come to us and say, I want to run this survey, we go through and we look at their survey questions and we help them structure them a little bit better or, you know, help them even, you know, combine questions because people don't like to take long surveys, right? Um, so we try to use our knowledge base to help others in Fedora succeed and try to assist them to get what they want done in an even better way. We also manage funding requests. I know I talked a little bit about events and swag. That is also part of that, but it's more than just that, right? We also coordinate things like um, um, sponsorships of other events, sponsorships of other communities. Um, it could be a service that we might need to run a website. Um, we also, you know, picked up Lime Survey, and so we manage the funding around that. Um, there's a variety of different things that we do around funding. So, um, Honor Alp or Vipple, did you want to add anything for this one? No, you covered it well. Thank you. Okay. So, I talked a little bit about who's on the team, but these are the exact folks that are on the team right now. Myself is the F Cake. Um, we have Nick Babau. He is uh, representing Fedora Ambassadors. We have Alberto Rodriguez Sanchez, who is representing ComOps. Adderall, who's on the call with us, says there is doing is representing websites and apps. Maureen Duffy is the representative for the design team. We have Petter Bocock from Docs. Vipple Siddharth also on the call, mentored projects, and we have two elected representatives. One is David Duncan, super excited to have someone who has a very strong technical background. We also have other people with technical backgrounds, but it was cool that he came, kind of came over um, from more of the Fesco side of uh, Fedora to be a part of Mindshare. Um, and we also have Madeline Peck. Madeline is a designer, and she has been managing the um, wallpaper release process for a couple cycles now and she is an awesome person and we're really excited to have her on board as well. So this is the current makeup of the Mindshare committee and I think we're going to have Madeline on for one release and David will be on for two right now. So there will be an elected seat coming up soon. So what has Mindshare been up to? You know, we talked a little bit like this is what we do in like a general sense. What were we actually doing, right? So in the past six months or so, we coordinated the Fedora t-shirt giveaway. So that was everything from like how it should be structured, figuring out the blog posts, figuring out the time zones and how to, to manage that. We also worked on the DOS keycap giveaway. Um, we took in multiple requests about sponsoring other community, community events and organizing the presence at those events. Not listed on here is scale, but we did help the scale folks, the ambassadors at scale, um, get everything they needed for that. Um, but we've had presence at Red Hat Summit. We've um, sponsored Academy, uh, the KDE conference, and this is our second year doing that. Um, we're a part of the Open SUSE conference, you know, part of sessions or just hanging out over there, providing sponsorship. And also, most recently, Guadic. We had office hours there. Um, we had an in person presence. I think we had some problems getting our swag um, through customs. I felt so horrible about that, but shipping globally has really been a headache these days. Justin, Justin did the swag ever make it? Yeah, he covered it. Well, um, I know. Oh, no. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to send it back. I should follow up with Carolyn. Over we need to refill Justin's, Justin's talk. Justin's talk at um, Guadalajara. Swap of swag so that he can redo it if needed. He covered <laughs> it for the logistics daily. <laughs> Justin, I would be happy to send you some swag because you are all over in the conference world. So happy to send some as um, you're definitely ambassador for Fedora. That's what he needs a t-shirt. Um, 
Yeah, I well, I have to check back in with uh, the organizers for Guada. I can see honestly where it is because there was a tablecloth in there, and that was not a cheap tablecloth. So we definitely want that back. <laughs> All right. So um, we also support the annual contributor survey. So we help to make sure that the questions are up to date. We work on making sure that the banners go up across um, all of the websites, of course, with the help of the websites and apps team. We have people working on the design banners that actually, you know, the image that you actually see going up. And then beyond that, we also do other community surveys. So, you know, we help with Ben Cotton's release survey. Most recently, we have set up the Apple survey and the Docs survey. So those are going right now. And Vipple actually is our Lime survey wrangler. I didn't mention it in the intro, but that is something he does. And I think he's sharing that knowledge, hopefully, so we can have some more people who are up and up on how to do the Lime surveys. We also work on coordination of virtual release parties. So we work on the content, who we're going to invite to speak at those events, um, the social times, we pick the dates with the help of the Fedora program manager, Ben Cotton. Um, so we're kind of working on all the different aspects of the virtual release parties. And we also do um, approval and coordination of swag and travel requests for ambassadors. So we had um, some folks at OzCal, we had the folks going to scale, um, we had a Fedora, I forget what it was called exactly, Fedora Day, Fedora Explorer Day, Fedora uh, Explorer Act Day. Activity Day. Yes, we had a uh, Fedora Explorer Day recently, I think that was in Panama. So we also did some to support hatches, but I kind of took that one on a little bit myself because it was more in the flock category, but we were definitely assisting and kind of figuring those out too. So those are examples of things we've done in the last six months. So say you wanted to do something similar to the, the different things we're describing here. How would you go about doing that? Well, there's a couple different ways that you can do that. You can attend their weekly meeting. It is open for all to join. Obviously, we're trying to get things done, so it's not just a chatting session. Um, if you want to just chat with members of Mindshare, some of us like to go to the socials, so if you want to just chat, come over to the socials. But um, what we're doing in our weekly meeting is going through tickets, talking about upcoming topics and events, that sort of thing. So you are welcome to join us and let the chair know, which is me right now, that you have a topic that you want to discuss. And you can let me know in advance. You could just come into the channel and say, hey, I'd like to show up at the next Mindshare meeting. I have something to discuss. If you know you want to talk about it live, you know, synchronously, we're happy to do that. There's async as well, which you can open a ticket on the Mindshare Peugeot repo. I know everyone pronounces Peugeot differently. <laughs> I don't know what's right, but that's how I'm going with it. So um, you're welcome to open a ticket on the Mindshare Peugeot repo describing what you want to do there's templates in there so if you want to do a survey there's a drop down it says template and you click live survey if you want to um, hold a small event and you're not an ambassador there's an advocate template um, i think the main template is just for events i want to say um, and then I think there's also some kind of, I know that there's one more in there. We have some templates that help to, um, you know, guide you in the request so we can get as much information as we need so that we can look at that request and make the approvals for you. You can also email the Mindshare mailing list. It's not very active. I email that about once a week with our meeting notes, um, but you're welcome to email there. I also realized something that should be on this list, but it's not, is discourse. So on discussion, um, .fedoraproject.org, we have a Mindshare tag. 
And that's, that's like actually like an umbrella tag that covers, you know, like com ops and magazine and ambassadors. But then we have a mind co tag. So the mind co tag is where you would reach our team specifically with some kind of request. Um, and last but not least, you can reach out to somebody who's on the committee via IRC or our element uh, matrix um, chat. Um, all of us are, you know, committed to Fedora and committed to being a part of Mindshare. So it's okay if you message us and say, hey, I have a request. Um, we know not everyone is not comfortable, um, you know, messaging a public channel, and that's okay. So if you would be more comfortable reaching out to one of us uh, individually, happy to answer any questions you might have. So those are like our responsibilities and the things that we kind of have to do, right? So like that's that's our function inside of Fedora and we try to keep all that stuff moving. But we try to be even more than that. We want to be even more than that. So um, we're open to discussing new ideas to help improve the Fedora community, right? So we're not the council. We're not making huge strategic um you know, changes or moves for the Fedora community, but we are all invested in the strategy for Fedora, especially involving community. So if you were to see, like, if there was something where you were like, I just don't think there's enough connection between X, Y, and Z, and I really have a great idea about how we can make that happen. You can come to Mindshare and say, hey, this is my idea to make, to improve this situation and we are probably, most likely, going to know the people to make that happen. And we can connect you and other people and other parts of Fedora in order to improve community health. So we are happy to hear new ideas. And even if you have like a new idea about how we do events, like about how we do swag, about how we do our tried and true Fedora things. That's something we're also open to. Um, I think the number one thing is we want to help make your Fedora thing succeed. So if you have a great idea that you're passionate about, if you have, you know, some, some project that you want to see really succeed, bring it to us and we are happy to help connect you, give you resources, do whatever we can to help that project succeed. There's a wealth of knowledge um, amongst all the people on the committee. Most of us have been involved for a long time, some shorter, and we're happy to have actually more newbies on the team too, because it gives us a completely different perspective. Like those folks are super valued on our team um, but a lot of us do have just a very long history with Fedora and kind of probably talk about it for way too long. Um, but definitely take advantage of that. Ask us questions. Um, we don't necessarily want to reinvent the wheel, but we want to make it a better wheel and improve things. But we're only nine people. So we're up to hearing other people's opinions and trying to work those in and make it work even better. So based on all of that, we have a representative to the council. That's Alberto. Um, and Alberto sits on the council as well to help make sure that um, things that are happening in Mindshare and are, first of all, communicated to the council, but also so that he can bring things from the council back to my chair, right? So I'm all, I am also sit on both the Mind Sharing Council as well as the Bull, so we have multiple connections there. But we wanted to have a dedicated representative um, that sits on the council to make sure that Mind Share needs are being accommodated for and accounted for on the council. So where can you find us? I talked about some things. I can share these links. Um, or share this, uh, sorry, this, this slide deck. I'm going to add it to the wiki um, probably after the event. But 
if people want to drop some of these links. Actually, I think I can just copy them and put them over here. So here's our docs. Uh, on or off that, the Pajor repo. Here's our mailing list. And, oh, okay. Honor Alps on it. I'm going to let you take care of that, Honor Alp. So, the mailing list, I mentioned IRC, and I also mentioned Element. These are the different places you can find us. Uh, yeah, we still use the mailing list. It's not very, like I mentioned, it's not very um, active. I usually use it for, um, like, bigger announcements that have to do with Mindshare, and I also um, send out meeting notes. Um, actually know that there's a people couple a couple of people at least to watch it for those meeting notes. So we so do I'm have happy. A, oh, I was uh, answering to on the We do have a discussion tag. Mind share. I shared the link up there. So that's what I was asking. Uh, we have discussion, and that's what we are doing most of the things. The mind share list is not very active, but that's also if you want to use that method. That's not expired yet, so that's a good thing to highlight. Yeah. I mean, we could move on to discussion. I think we'd have to, you know, talk as a team and see if that's something we're ready to do. Um, it probably it could empower something even nicer. We can do it in the first step, I believe. Like, some of the choices we did, as you know, it would be also nice to do this one. It's not so productive. We can easily move in, probably, at least for us. Yeah, I think it would just, the only real change would be I would put our meeting logs and stuff on, like, a discussion thread. Or even just, like, a new new post. Or you can use the same post to specifically just update. Yeah, update. It would, it would become a very long post. I think we should limit it to, like, yearly, right? So, like, Mindshare Meetings 2022 and then make a new post for 2023. Well, uh, you, you have you. We can actually make it. You can just copy it. You know, links. The meeting about okay. created. We can post the links to these three lines. It will be shorter. Yeah, not that super long. So we can actually I like make to it write short. like a little summary too, so that people don't necessarily have to read through the whole sure. thing. Sure, sure, sure. And the sure. summary is like, okay, I'm interested in that. Let me go read the log. Or you know, that's not really for me. I don't really care about any of that. I'm just gonna you know archive this. So a nice way is. How we do community blog post, upcoming community blog posts. It has a calendar, and when you reply to that post with a day, with a date, and the link or anything in there, so you can just navigate in the calendar, click on the event, and it will take you to that comment as well. Something so, like this. A community blog post for every meeting seems like a no, oh, like oh, like how we do for community blog is what I meant. Like how we keep okay. track of upcoming community blogs, not community blog. Uh, the discussion post. So you're saying you would you automatically know. post? No. So in discussion, what you can do is you can have a calendar as the main topic. And when you respond to that with a date and then anything, it creates an event in the calendar that you have in discussion. So people can navigate the calendar to see the meeting uh, in, uh, meeting notes and details. So they don't have to go through the thread, like go through the responses. Gotcha. So you can see the link that I provided there. So basically, we're going to update kind of simply the calendar section, you mean? Yeah. So no one has to go through the thread. So we can, we can create a calendar and we can update the calendar after the meeting and keep it over there as a mm -hmm. previous meetings. I like that. I never, I don't think I've seen this community blog one, probably because I don't run the community blog. <laughs> um, but I think it's very useful. Hmm, we can and discuss those and give it a shot. Matthew says that he has a script which can automatically generate the posts from FedAccount entries as well. So that's oh. cool. That's right. So um, to continue on with the presentation, you can be a part of Mindshare, and we absolutely would love for more people to run for Mindshare. For about two years now, we've been trying to increase um, engagement in Mindshare, understanding of Mindshare, um, you know, what we're doing, what we're all about, you know, this was something that Bex had kicked off and it was an evolution from a couple other things, right? And it was kind of this, hey, we're trying to bring a bunch of different, you know, kinds of functions and responsibilities all together and make it a more unified thing. So we're open to, you know, 
Fedora veterans, Fedora newbies, we're always welcome to new perspectives on the committee. Um, so there are elected seats. There's one open every release cycle. Um, and, you know, we want to be upfront about what being a part of the committee means. And it's about a one to three hour commitment per week, right? So we have that weekly meeting. Um, there's an early one and a late one. So a lot of folks are just doing every other meeting, right? If they're in a APAC time zone, they don't want to come to the meeting that's at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Like, that's just not even possible. Hopefully they're asleep. Bippo, I'm looking at you. Um, hopefully they're asleep at that time. And there's some people we have in the U.S. that don't necessarily want to come to an 8 a.m. meeting or maybe even earlier for them. Um, so, you know, it's maybe about, you know, you can skip every other meeting depending on what your time zone is. But in general, it's a one to three hour commitment per week. So if you're not coming to a meeting, that's totally fine. But we want you to look through the logs, vote on tickets, add your commentary um, as you're able. We also hope that people on the Mindshare Committee would be up to attending events like NEST, like the release parties, um, like the office hours that we have at, you know, other conferences. Um, you know, we would hope that you would be able to be involved, but not everyone is. You know, it's there's a mixture of um, a lot of time commitment and allowances that we have. We all have different limitations. So we're open to, you know, working with people and whatever your schedule is, we can do something to make that work. So. We invite people who are interested to be a part of Mindshare. Um, and thank you. Thank you for listening. That went about a half an hour. So now we can take questions. I think I'm going to take down my screen just so that we can see everyone's faces a little bit bigger. Um, oh, I have to actually like respond to the polls to be able to see what the answers are. Decaf weird coffee. <laughs> so cool. Most of the people here know what Mindshare is already. Um, better, than, gonna, better than last year. Yes, um, but some people are saying no or they're not quite sure. So I'm going to put up a new one. I hope this uh, presentation answered their seven votes in this perspective, answer the question, what's Mindshare doing it? And, and answer the question to them, hopefully. All right, I just published a new poll. Yeah, that's basically the question. Did, did a squirrel actually cut your fiber optic cable or are you just making a joke? I don't know, but I'm sure it did. Like, I didn't see it doing it, but you know, whenever I take out my car or scooter and it tries to run in front of me, just so that I somehow trapped, you know, trying to save it. Super evil looking squirrel, I'm telling you. It okay. might. Yeah. All right. So in our poll, definitely uh, answer that if you're able to. Um, after the presentation, do you have a bet? Oh, I have a typo in there. Might be. Okay. So two people are still not sure. So if you would like in the Q&A, ask us about what you're not sure about and what you can do is post it anonymously if you you know you don't want to say who you are that's totally fine and for now we'll start answering the Q&A and then hopefully we can you know get to those questions that might clarify things for you so the first okay. question is can you mention or talk a little bit about fedora hatches i never uh, got deeper on what was the intention behind them. I know Mexico had one. So I'm happy to take this one. Sure. Okay. Please. So Fedora Hatch was something that came out of the desire to see people in person. Um, we had a discussion post about this year's contributor conference asking the community whether or not they were comfortable to have an international conference. Most of the people who answered on the thread said they weren't, but that they were sorely still missing Fedora people. 
um, and that they wanted to see their fedora friends. So they would be comfortable going to local in-person meetups. So uh, we put a call for volunteers to organize these local in-person meetups that were going to happen right around Nest, right? So like in July, in August, we were hoping maybe beforehand, but I think we have a couple that are, or one that's coming after. Um, so this is a chance for people to get together during the summer around the time we're having this um, virtual contributor conference to see Fedora friends in person. So um, that's basically the idea behind the hatch. It's another, it's like a offshoot of Nest and it's a much, much smaller version of hatch. So it's like, or sorry, a flock. Yeah. It's a local, <laughs> it's a local in-person meetup. So I hope that answered your question, Edward. May I kick uh, the Yeah, go for it. So there's a question about uh, if there's any posts about a uh, mindshare go a mindshare talk. So if uh, so, all marketing posts also going will also tag mindshare. Uh, technically, you don't have. To. If it is about just marketing, something is related to marketing, you can keep it is only in marketing tag. It's not necessarily has to be tagged in mindshare. But if you think that it's also some topics is relative and or important or needs to be known by mindshare people or it's also has some connections, yes, you can use even both in this matter. So uh, just choices is basically up to what you're posting and what it's about. So it can be even completely something else and also can be uh, relevant to us. But that's basically content of the uh, post. About. I hope that will answer the question. So I had an added thing about the marketing team as um, I know that there's like a lot of efforts going on there. Yes. And if um, those folks feel like, you know, that's going to be sustained and it kind of keeps going and going, we would love to have a marketing representative on Mindshare. The seats on Mindshare are not set, right? So we had a um, a websites representative for a very long time um, and then we changed that right so the websites became websites and apps and the team revamped itself and so we had like a change of what the representative was called we also had a change of representative so at one point I don't think we had a mentored projects at one point we didn't have a design team so really Folks can come and go, right? If the team is act, if your team is active and you're doing outreach type efforts, we would love to have a representative um, join Mindshare. So that's something that's up to the marketing team. We don't want to force anyone to take on extra responsibilities or commitments that they're not ready for. But if over time marketing feels like they want to be involved in this discussion, that is absolutely something we can do. So. Vipul, do you want to take the next question from Justin? Yeah, I was just thinking about that. Go ahead. So, if I look at Mindshare, it's it's not really one defined team. It's multiple people doing their own thing, and they take initiatives, and then it ends up being part in the Mindshare committee because they're representing there, and if they need resources, they can participate. A couple of examples. We are doing Federal Week of Diversity, and we are doing Accessibility Working Group volunteer calling right now these things are not directly in mindshare but if you look at the certain tasks that would come up in future it would require dei uh, say federal week of diversity would need budget they would open a ticket they would need help from different people different special interest group coming up giving talks and same goes for accessibility working group right we will require a lot more things uh, just different people showing up and helping us doing the part from design to uh, diversity and uh, packages marketing so a lot of initiatives that are being taken in the community happen to be just open but they can be classified under say council mindshare because we can tap those resources and availability that we have there uh, they are not necessarily distinct or sandboxed in there that is at least that's how i see it so keeping an eye open on what's happening in the community you would be able to participate in any one of those 
discussion has changed a lot of this. You don't need to participate or be subscribed to too many mailing lists to see what's happening. And once you join something, it's very, it's a big possibility that anything beyond engineering would touch mindset at some point. And any working group or any seg to grow, I feel it has to expand beyond just one focus group and touch different fields and groups. So I would say from my understanding is whatever you find interesting, just participating in that and see what kind of resources and help you need and how you can tap into mindshare resources and council uh, expertise and it will work there. Yes, Andra. I would like to ask a couple of sentences about it. Uh, Hold on. Before you add, just because um, this video will go up on YouTube and the question won't be there, I just want to read it out so that people know what question we're answering. Do you think there are other ways to engage people in Mindshare-like activities without necessarily being a part of Mindshare? Or how can someone participate in cross-team efforts without being elected to the committee? Uh, uh such a uh, couple of them got me full sets. Uh, when the, uh, let me give you one example story from myself, which was when ambassador program was finally become uh, not act so many active. When the mind share is become getting active and getting grow, I even specifically asked, what should I do? And I wasn't even part of it. I just, uh, all the, uh, the simple answer as usual in every single uh, federal team was, uh, just the same is join the meeting uh, give your opinion say something and if you know something is better than any of us please make your statement and give your idea maybe you find something even better than any of us or it could be maybe not perfect but we can improve and help you to make your idea better or make it uh, that we all can be happy about it based on the suggestion so if, if participation doesn't require a title. That's actually the same for entire FEDERA. Titles is just show that your activity, your volunteer level. But in FEDERA, even if I'm not any of these every single uh, groups, I can just go to their meeting, listen to that, and give my opinion about it in their respectable way. So I think that's also the same goes for my chair as well. Yeah, I would agree. I have one more thing to add. So there is a very concrete way um, to participate in cross-team efforts, which is not Mindshare, which is the program management team. Um, and I've gone to the program management team a couple times asking for program managers to be a part of, you know, NEST or um, Fedora Week of Diversity or the Annual Contributor Survey. And those are people who, you know, want to focus on those kinds of efforts, are really into organizational um, activities, who um, want to be the glue between the different teams, right, and help make sure things are moving. I'm pretty sure we also have someone from the program management team, a part of the websites and apps revamp. So that's, that's like a very concrete way. If like that's what you care about doing very specifically, you can join up with the program management team. So I just wanted to mention that um, before we moved on. But I hope that answered your question, Justin. So I'm going to go to the next question. Any future goals for Mindshare in the next one or two release cycles? So does anyone have uh, something they'd like to add to that? I have some, but not the full answer. Maybe Marie, you can help me out on that. Yeah, and uh, Some of the goals is coming from elected representative to say what they want to do in the mindshare. So every people come with their plans, and that plans is also depend on it's coming into it. Uh, but when it comes to general uh, next cycle plans, uh, that's where yes, Mary wants to say something better than me, I believe. Please. So, <clears throat> I don't know if 
everyone on the call knows this, but I am going to be moving on from the FK position. So I don't have personally very strong goals for my chair, but I know things that I'd like to see. Um, part of the reason I'm moving on is because I've just done a lot and I want to see someone with new energy take this on and, and give, you know, Fedora their best, right? I don't think I can do that anymore. My energy has definitely been depleted a little bit, but it's because I love Fedora and the community so, so very much. But something I'd like to see is our Mindshare queue not be 50 tickets. So even if that means closing things because it's out of scope, that's fine. You know what I mean? Like things can be out of scope, things can be stale, but if, you know, just making what the team is looking at at one time a bit more manageable. Um, I'd also like to see if it's possible bringing the Mindshare community together in person. Um, I really think that, you know, something that's missing in our governance and in some of our teams is that, you know, face-to-face -face connection. It makes a huge difference. Um, it also gives people a space to just focus on Mindshare or just focus on Council or just focus on Festo, right? Or just focus on Fedora overall, right? Whereas when we're doing these virtual events, it's great because it's accessible to so many more people. Um, we have all the distractions of being at home, you know, cooking ourselves lunch, you know, dealing with the kids, dealing with the pets, taking the trash out, um, no matter what it is, you know, there's all kinds of stuff going on at home. So it's just not as immersive and it's not as, um, it's not as deep of a connection for people, right? And then you just have the scheduling issue of getting everyone together. Like I was trying to organize a council virtual face-to-face -face, and there was literally no times that even half of us could be there. And we were just like, well, this is not going to work out, right? Like we need at least half of the council to be able to participate in it. Or it's like just me, Ben, and Matthew, <laughs> which were great. But that, you know, it, we're just for people and we don't want to make decisions like for all of Fedora. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to help and to, to help guide and bring the resources that are needed, right? So I'd like to see a shorter queue for Mindshare. I'd love to see a little bit of updated docs, which I didn't mention, but I'd like to see. And it's hope, something I hope to be able to kind of do in my wrap-up time as FCAKE. And then I'd also like to see for my chair to be able to get together in person. I have, like, I, I love the idea of in-person hackfest. I also have another wishful thinking. Now, I don't know the possibility and feasibility of it. Is uh, public budget, if possible, so that mindset committee members can make informed decision of where the money should go or what kind, what, how much more money do we have to be able to sponsor different things. Uh, that would enable a lot of mindset committee members, I feel. Yes, I'm going to take accountability for this and say that I have not done as good of a job as Bex did with the budget reporting. Um, he has skills to build websites and work on websites and that's not something I have so I was not able to continue his budget website um, and I had you know ideas for these quarterly budget reports and you know it just got swept along in the current with all of the other you know small things and big things um, but most recently we have worked on a budget report for 2022 and there's a draft out there me and um, the intern that's working with me, Issa, are, you know, kind of making changes based on the Mindshare committee's feedback. And we're going to be sharing that in a blog post. Um, so oh, nice. that's something that we're trying to do to fix it. But I'm going to take full accountability and say I have not done a great job in that part of, of the FK role. So I apologize for that. And I think I could have done No, better. I think the challenge was not having better system in place that it was not a decent Right, like them. an interface that I could easily trans like. Yeah, I use. think if, if you have to can. climb a mountain to do this task, it's not a great task. So my, what I'm trying to say is having an easier workflow to handle this is a better way to handle the budget so that community can have more insight and easy for FK to update it. All of those combined. So 
no one should be battling these tasks and clearly that's there's enough going on in community that's big enough <laughs> I just want to say, you know, the F cake job is great, but it's, you know, it's a, like a, it's a, it's a, big, some it's, a big, yeah. it's a big role. <laughs> There's lots to yeah. it. Um, and plenty of things pop up that you don't even expect that take up a lot of time and energy. Um, okay. So let's try to get through a few more of these questions. We have 10 minutes left. Yeah, they're not so, too left. Any challenges do you, um, are there any challenges that you think the Mindshare Committee faces? A lot. <laughs> Do you want to take um, that one I, on or off? <laughs> well, I mean, you just say a couple of the challenges about badges. It's actually kind of thing uh, that website team may make and help. Would have helped you, but decisions, you know, the revamp and stuff, maybe the next FK wouldn't have this problem based on your feedback, hopefully. And if you have a better system, like interface you mentioned. So that's actually one of the challenges right now. In this, in this very talk, we can just say it's a challenge. And some of the challenges is, I believe, is sometimes, I can say, um, it's going to be a little bit of a, a better sweet kind of situation. Shipments. Sending stuff to the people is definitely a challenge. I know, Mary, what exactly she's feeling it. I had some problems as well. Even uh, people in uh, Ripple, I think, has more problematic situations based on the country. <laughs> so that's also one of the other challenges, I guess, you can say as a fun one. And also, I think uh, another challenge is, 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 like everyone else in the community, is Mindshare was also uh, getting together. It's a fresh project as well. Like It's not like super, super old, but it's a fresh look and a fresh way to represent a lot of stuff. I think I'm saying correct. It, OK. So getting together and put this a lot of themes in together and which is a lot of responsibility, controlling it, having this stuff. So it says like it's at the moment like a lot of tasks just putting it in and makes that make the connections and trying to find the proper people and make this community active and happy, organizing events. Like if you just if I just keep saying our missions, you will basically understand that this is actually a challenge. Each task is actually a challenge to us we need to accomplish. So it's not necessarily it should be hard or easy, but it's a challenge and it's a responsibility in the mind share that having it through. Plus, it's a fresh start and all the fresh stuff is not sometimes super easy to bring together. I think on that section, Marie did a great job. So I definitely congratulate him here in here. Vipul, oh. <clears throat> did you want to add? Yeah, all of that and this general thing that is not, it's a global problem, to be honest, uh, a community committee where exactly. there's not a fixed defined goal of what you have to do. If it was just about doing tickets or if it was just about giving votes on these things, it's a different thing, but each mindset committee do their own thing and recently everyone has their own things to do. So expecting people to show up while that's what exactly I would like to see more people to show up in meetings, more people to have conversations. If you are an elected member, if you're a mindset member, I would like to see a comment on every tickets. That's what we'd love to see. That's the challenge. But it's not that people are just not interested. If you look at behind why it's happening, you would explore. There are so many things going on and it's not just mindset problem, but it's general co community problem everywhere. Some more, somewhere more, somewhere less. So, People being able to show up, being in the right mindset to be able to do the tasks, aware of their responsibilities and aware of their rights and what they can do, their power. So that's the challenge, I would say. And again, a, lar a large part of it is COVID because yeah, everyone has a lot going on. Everyone has kids and family at home. Not everyone, but most of us, right? So it's a bit yeah. challenging in that case, yeah. I, the biggest okay. challenge is I will just meet Murray. That's my challenge. Thanks <laughs> In to COVID. person. In person, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I would agree. I was going to, Ripple, if you didn't say that, I think it was beautifully said. Um, and I think, you know, part of it is people being willing to say, this is not something I can do anymore. And that's something that's really hard to say, right? Or... You know, having that honest conversation and saying, I want to, but I maybe I need to make some changes in order to make it work, right? Most of the people on Mindshare are doing stuff all over the project, 
Like, we're busy people. We have other things that we care about, especially the representatives from teams. You know, we're doing all this stuff over here with the team, and then there's also the mind share happening, right? So I think part of it is, you know, um, being able to address that with members of the committee. And I really try to do that. You know, if I notice someone isn't around that much or it might seem like they're struggling, I have a conversation with them on the side and I just say, hey, you know, what's going on? How are you? You know, is this something that, you know, you want to continue doing? And if not, it's totally okay. Um, so a lot has been going on with COVID. I think we've all had our, you know, dose of mental health stuff, just dealing with the change, dealing with adapting to it, dealing with all of the kind of social division and, and stuff that's been happening, social, like sociopolitical stuff that's been happening. It's just like a lot going on in the world. So I think that's actually just like a huge challenge overall. But I do try to help mitigate that a little bit by having, you know, honest and empathetic, compassionate conversations with the people who are on the committee. So um, we have time for one more question. Let's try to get it in. Um, out of curiosity, a question to you all, what's your favorite way of engaging with the community? Um, could be more in-person events or other activities. Candy swaps. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think for these years and years before, we can say we all love to engage our community in person events. I guess that's going to be one of the general answer. Or all of us can agree with it, I hope. I mean, I, I have not tried Turkish candy on it all, so I, I prepared it already, my friend. It's that. already, it's already waiting for you with other uh, baklavas and others. Don't worry, yes. I got you covered, <laughs> my friend. I got you covered. <laughs> you know me. I know you, man. I know, I know. So that's kind of one of the favorite ways of engaging. Friendship in person. We want to do, even if you are far away. We just want to. This friendship and engagement is also one of the foundation of further is our. At least for me, it's my favorite way for engagement. Okay. So I think my favorite way, de definitely in-person events. I love the candy swap. Like, I miss just hanging out with people and chatting. But um, as Epcake, it's definitely given me a unique opportunity to connect with contributors in a way that I didn't really as just a contributor. Like, you know, when I was previously just a contributor. This has given me a different opportunity. I think being part of Mindshare too, um, but you know, being in the FK role, people reach out to me with things that they never would have. Um, and I'm able to connect with them, you know, on a really personal level. And um, I think this is definitely a balance of, you know, energy, not putting um, too much of my own energy, not losing too much of my own energy in it, but also connecting with people on really like personal things that I just never would have and I've met so many people and befriended so many people because of this um, and you know the support the, the support I've gotten back from those people it just it's like magnitudes more right like I give some and then people are just like so happy have that interaction and that connection with me and um, they come back to Fedora and like I want to do all this stuff and it, it's just it's like kind of magical so I have really enjoyed having one-on-one -on -one relationships with a ton more community members than mm -hmm. I, I ever had in the past I have one more beautiful answer Marie by the way I may be biased shout out to Yona social time in Fedora Mentor Summit uh, by the way, Yona is a rock star. She helped, uh, like, Yona and I did Federal Mentor Summit with a lot of other volunteers' help. Thank you, everyone. That was great for me. I may be biased. All right, folks. I have to be in another session right now, so I definitely need to run. Um, but thank you all so much for the thoughtful questions. Thank you, Anurab and Zippel, for being a part of this session with me. Y'all are great. So and to all the Mindshare committees that Mindshare committee members who couldn't be here, we miss you, and um, we'll see you online next week. Bye, folks. Bye. -bye.